Hi everyone, it's Keely, and Halloween greetings to you, and welcome back to another Halloween video. Today, I'm going to be painting a panel that I got from Checkle Art Supplies actually last October, because I have this really bad habit of buying panels and then being like, oh, it's too precious to use, I can't paint it, even though painting it is exactly what I bought it for. It's an illness, I know this. No, I will not accept any critique. This is my personal struggle, and I want to keep it this way. Thank you very much for understanding. Today, I'm going to be using my typical acrylic gouache colors. I will be using orange, jet black, and titanium white. So like I said, I did buy this panel last year. Again, I know it's a problem. I can't, there's nothing I can say for myself. I actually also have another couple that I ordered at the same time that I also haven't painted, both from anxiety and also just because hoarding, you know. I have a really hard time when I spend like a lot of money on something to paint because it just gets in my head and I'm like, don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Even though I know very well I could just sand this down if I did ruin it. Fun fact, if you didn't know. If you are painting on a wooden panel, you can normally sand down your painting if you don't like it and totally get rid of it, or you can just add more primer over the top until it's opaque again. But it is best for you to prime it because that's what creates the buffer between the wood and the painting so that the paint doesn't soak directly into the wood and stay in the wood because that just makes it way harder to cover up. So always prime your panels. This one I actually bought pre-primed, which was pretty cool, but priming is pretty easy. I like to normally use Liquitex Gesso and then do two, possibly three coats of that until it's opaque and then you are good to go. You normally need to let it dry 24 hours and then you can just paint right on top of it. But I would always recommend priming your panels, especially because it just creates a more even base to start on top of. I've made the mistake before of thinking that priming a panel is not that important. Just trust me, it is. Wooden panels with no primer on them, even if it looks like a uniform color, always casts that like orangey woodish tone onto your painting. And it just does not go very smoothly, so just heed my warning. Heed your old art ant's warning. Prime your panels, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. So, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but one of, no, quite possibly my favorite Halloween theme is vintage Halloween. I just recently started learning about the different types of Halloween decorations, because in my mind I had a distinction, but I did not know about the different names for Halloween styles. And so if you are like a huge Halloween fan, like you really enjoy the spooky season, really like decorating for it, I would really suggest looking up the names of different Halloween decorating styles and like Halloween themes and whatnot, because it's actually really interesting to like learn about the origins of a lot of this stuff. But one of my favorites is vintage Halloween, you know, like the good old like 40s, 50s vintage Halloween. So this year, as you all know, I am not doing Inktober. Actually, you might not know if you don't follow me on Instagram, but if you follow me on Instagram, you know. I am not doing Inktober this year for a lot of reasons. If you want to know why probably a lot of artists aren't doing Inktober this year, I would suggest googling the person who started Inktober, who like created the ch like challenge or trend or whatever. Uh, he's kind of turned out to be a little bit of a turd burger, to be honest. A lot of people decided not to participate in his challenge between the just like way he behaved about it this year and the way he behaved about it last year as well. It's just not really a trend that I'm like looking to support, but I have no problem with other people who want to participate in it because I feel like Inktober itself has moved past the creator and it's been taken over by the people. We own this now. <laughs> but another reason I didn't want to participate in it this year is because Honestly, daily drawing challenges are just not something that my old body can keep up with anymore. I'm not happy with my work when I try and output art on a daily basis, which is what I used to aim for, just not even during Inktober exclusively, but all year. I used to always aim to like do a drawing a day, which is like I think a good idea. But for me, at this point in my career, I know that doing an entire drawing or illustration in one day, every day, 
uh, just leads to art that I'm unhappy with. I don't put enough time into it. I don't get enough time to put into it if I do it that way. And I'm just unhappy with the work that I do. So honestly, I would much rather spend longer on fewer pieces of artwork, but know in my heart that I'm really, really pleased with the way the work turned out. And I can happily say that this is one of them. But so for my spooky season artwork, because even though I'm not participating in Inktober, I of course was not going to miss out on the opportunity to make spooky artwork because Halloween is my favorite time of the year. It is my heart, my body, my soul, and I was not prepared to relinquish it. So I decided that I kind of wanted to do 1950s Halloween drawings. And this is one of them. I was looking at vintage Halloween costumes and like what sort of costumes were normal around this time and like what costumes were more popular. And even though now I think a lot of us think of clowns as really creepy, um, just due to like, you know, that one year there were like killer clowns and we didn't really do anything about it. My husband kept telling me that this looks like Pennywise and I'm like, listen, I don't want to have to throw hands. I am a nonviolent person, but I'll reconsider if you don't stop saying that. Anyway, so I think a lot of us just associate clowns with creepy, which to be fair, I do too. Clowns are not really my favorite thing, but looking at all these like vintage, cute Halloween clown costumes, I was like, actually, I kind of want to make like a little emo clown. I'm like, I cannot lie. My heart says yes. So that's what I aimed for here. I hope you guys like it. I enjoyed painting this. I really, I don't know, man, the older I get, the more I'm like, nah, I really think limited color palettes are my thing. I don't like using lots of colors. It's just not fun. I like a few colors that go really, really nicely together and it makes my heart happy. So that's what I did. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you're interested in giving this cute little clown girl a new home, you can find the link to my shop in my bio down below. She is looking for a wall to haunt for the rest of her life. So if you're really into looking at clowns for every day for the rest of forever, I think she might be for you. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any more questions about any of the materials I used or anything like that, I will put as many details as I can get my hands on down below in the description box. And yeah, follow along for more videos this spooky season, and I hope you all are doing really, really well, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Heard voices in the night Whispers of double lives Saw a back from away your knife Went in Dark eyes without a face Now that I'm on the case I lay confidential I deal with the devil I won't leave a trace Watching every move you make Suspect watching every move.